So basically, uh, I divide Jack, Black Jack, into two parts. There's what I would call the more kid-friendly part and the little more older reader part because uh, the beginning part is focused on his life and then the second part focuses on his battle for the championship. So I'm going to pick it up for the battle for the championship because that's when we really get to learn um, what it is that he wants to do. Now, Jack was a mighty man, and Jack was a fighting man, and Jack was a mighty fighting man. But what Jack wanted most was to be a great man, so he challenged the times. But it was Jack who was challenged when he faced the color line. White only fought white, and that kept Jack out of the ring to fight the champ in a championship bout. I will never fight a Negro, Jim Jeffries, heavyweight champ. So Jack chased the champ from fight to fight, Challenging Jim Jeffries to prove his might. Jack wanted to prove he was the best fighter, but instead of fighting Jack, Jim Jeffries retired. With the title up for grabs, Jack now had a chance to break the color line with his mighty fighting hands. The new champ, Tommy Burns, also declined to fight Black Jack because of the color line. So just like Jim Jeffries, Jack chased him down from city to city to contend for the crown. From San Fran to New York to Paris to London, for two years, Jack was a man on a mission. At long last, Tommy stepped into the ring to battle Black Jack for a mountain of green. Rushcutters Bay, Australia, was the scene for the black and white battle to crown boxing's biggest king. Thousands filled the stadium as well as the surrounding trees, hoping Tommy Boy would knock Jack to his knees. When Jack rose in the ring, a sea of white faces turned a battle of men to a battle of races. But Jack just smiled and waited for the sound of the bell to ding, then knock the champ down. Not once, not twice, but again and again through 14 rounds on the way to the win. Fans in the stands sat wide-eyed and surprised, but black fat faces back home beamed with pride. Jack was now champ, but in less than a day, voices worldwide spoke up to say, Burns wasn't the real champ anyway. Burns was just a newspaper champ. Burns never fought Jim Jeffries. Jeffries retired undefeated, so until somebody beats him, he's still the champ. Jim, come out of retirement and wipe that smile off Johnson's face. You're our only hope. Now, a quick little side note. The phrase, the great white hope, came from that moment in this fight. You're our only hope. But Jim wouldn't budge until 18 months later, when he and Jack stood, surrounded by spectators, in a ring in Reno, Nevada, to see who was the champ in the battle of the century. On the 4th of July in 1910, on a clear desert day, stood two mighty men, Jack versus Jim, one black, one white, two mighty fighting men, ready to fight. The 45-round bout only lasted 15, when Jack made history with his breathtaking swing. Uppercuts to the chin laid Jim on the ropes and smashed the color line, raising black people's hopes. A golden smile flashed, bright as the sun, and the ring on the face of Jack Johnson, the world's first black heavyweight champion. Black Jack.